Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and I've been getting request after request on YouTube and Twitter <laughs> telling me to talk about the PS4 specs that dropped today. So, I read and read and researched and researched so that I could not just read off spec lines to you, but give you some sort of analysis on what they might mean. Uh, for those of you that don't normally watch my videos, in addition to being a gamer, I also have a master's in engineering with a focus in comp size, so I understand computer specs and design maybe a little better than most gamers do. I hope that doesn't sound arrogant. I'm just trying to let you know where I'm coming from. Anyway, let's get started. First up, memory or RAM. 8 gigabytes. That's what I'm reading. I read. I reported once before that it was going to be 4 and that it was going to be less than the Xbox and that troubled me. Y'all, the 4 is a little low. My main point of contention was that it didn't match the Xbox, you know? Like, hypothetically, if whatever, the PS4 had 16 and the Xbox had 2, then it would bother me in that, you know, the lowest common denominator is the one they're going to be writing cross-platform games for, and I didn't want one to be significantly weaker than the other. I read another article that said that the bump, you know, that, that the 4 number was originally right at one point, but due to some sort of corporate espionage, Sony found out what Microsoft was doing and upped their RAM to 8 so that they would match it. I have no idea if that's true. You know, not everything you hear on the internet is true. <laughs> so, but I read it and I thought it was interesting and it kind of tied into the narrative that I had seen before. So I thought I would share it with you. Anyway, 8 gigs of RAM. Video memory, 2.2 gigs, which is also good. I don't know how that compares. I haven't seen specs on the Xbox 720 video memory, but 2.2 gigs of video memory is, is not bad for a console. I'd love to see four, but whatever. It, it's pretty strong and it's way stronger than we're used to now. Let's get on to the good stuff. It's rumored to have four dual-core AMD64 bulldozer processors. All right, so let's talk about what this means. Four dual-core processors is a total of eight cores, but they're eight kind of weak cores, and to decide whether or not we like this, we're going to talk about the application that it's going to solve, right? Because eight cores is a lot, but in some cases, you're much better off having, say, like, you know, four really good cores compared to eight mediocre cores. Where do we fit here? Well, I think it's a good choice. Here's the deal. Sometimes in computing, tasks can easily be broken up into separate threads, and sometimes they can't. Separate threads, separate processes. That means that these things can all happen simultaneously and you know execute in parallel. If the task is such that you can divide it, then it's great for this. If it's not, then it's it's terrible for this. So you know, really, if the task can be divided or not determines on whether or not Part two of the task depends on part one. Little basic comp sci type stuff here. So listen, if your task was kind of like dominoes, where one triggers the other, triggers the other, triggers the other, having lots of cores doesn't get you anywhere. Rendering an HTML page is a lot like that. You know, the whole thing just sort of goes top to bottom and you're stuck. On the other hand, if the task can be broken up into smaller jobs, then you're great with all these cores. And in gaming, it can. Gaming is incredibly graphics oriented. Imagine this, right? Let's say you wanted to rotate a picture, and a picture was just rows and columns of pixels, like a gigantic tic-tac-toe board. You following me here? If I wanted to rotate it, I'd take the top row and then stack it vertically in a brand new picture. Take the next row, stack it vertically next to it. Take the next row, stack it. Now I'm you know, three columns deep in this thing. I could do that again and again and again. Now, instead of doing it like that, one at a time, grab a row, slide it, grab a row, slide it. Let's just, I hope you're picturing this along next to me and not getting lost. Then let's do it this way instead. Let's divide the picture into quarters and then take, you know, all four of the top rows and make a new picture. All four of the next rows make a new picture and then reassemble them at the end. That's an example of a task that is super easy to break into separate threads to, to handle like that. So anyway, is it a good choice to load up with a gabillion or eight, <laughs> uh, you know, sort of weak cores compared to one expensive core? Yeah, I think it is. In gaming, there are a ton of tasks that break into lots of different you know, processes that you can run parallel. So obviously these guys know what they're doing and they picked a CPU or in this case four CPUs that match the task at hand. Next up, the GPU. Uh, it's the AMD R10XX. I wasn't familiar with this. You know, I, I had reported previously that it looked like it was going to be based on the 7970, which is a very good CPU. One of the... <laughs> there are two CPUs that sort of fight for supremacy, the 680 
in the 7970. A lot of people don't know that, you know, because of the new drivers and the new gigahertz version of the 7970, they, they currently own the crown, but the 680 did not too long ago, and I got a lot of actually incorrect feedback saying that I mislabeled which one was the top card. But um, uh, anyway, the point is, it's among the top cards. When you look at the 7970 and the, and the 680, you're talking about the best cards out there. And I didn't know what the AMD R10XX really was all about, so I had to do my research. And it is the same Tahiti processor that the 7970 runs on. So that rumor could still be true, that it's based on that same processor or a variation of it. But anyway, the GPU that's going in the PS4 is going to be right there with the cutting edge GPUs that you can get in a PC at the time of its release. And of course, you know, this is how consoles go, right? When they release and they're brand new, they're competitive with PCs in terms of processing power, and then over time they slip behind until they catch up again. That That's just the, the cycle that consoles go through. But anyway, uh, I'm excited that Sony has decided to put such a good GPU in their system, assuming that it's all true. Next up, this is the stuff I put the least amount of faith in. By the way, all these specs and leaks are based on the dev kit that came out. So Sony is giving out development kits to people so that they can have games at the time of launch, right? They have to do that. They have to give these guys units. Otherwise, the, the console will launch and there'll be nothing to play. But um, it has four USB ports, the USB 3.0 ports, thank goodness. And it has dual Ethernet ports. Dual Ethernet ports? That shocks me especially. What are they doing with these double Ethernet ports? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Maybe this is just dev kit stuff that's not going to work its way into the uh, into the console. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like I consider myself kind of technical, and I don't know what a console would do with dual Ethernet ports. But uh, um, whatever. <laughs> it's going to come with a Blu-ray drive. That's zero surprise considering that we're talking about the Sony console and they own the Blu-ray standard and the PS3 has the Blu-ray. It's got to do it. Um, the hard drive, this means nothing I think in a dev spec box. Who knows what they're going to be released in, in the actual console, but it has a 160 gigabyte hard drive, which is nice. You know, whatever. We like that. And then audio output, HDMI, optical, and then 2051 and 71 channels. So, uh, I'm really glad to hear that optical is in there because uh, uh, that's key to, I think, getting around HDCP and copyright protection. And, you know, it's big in my world. And if you wear a headset, a lot of times uh, headset users, you know, rock the optical port too. So I'm glad that that's sticking. And, uh, and that's cool. So uh, the 160 gigabyte hard drive, like I said, means nothing. If that struck you as kind of small, then um, you know, don't worry too much. Shucks, maybe they'll squeeze half terabyte drives in there or something when, uh, when the console ships. These are just dev kits, and I guess they don't expect dev kit guys to, uh, you know, to fill up hard drives for no good reason. I made a video recently about the new PS4 controller that's been rumored. Uh, we saw one through a patent that had a controller. It looked a lot like the, the DualShock that you're used to today, but it split in two, and it had the little balls on it that you get on a Move controller. And uh, and that is in their patent, right, so that other people can't copy that, that design. But recently... Like I've been seeing the same rumor pop up in more places, which makes me tend to believe it more, that it's going to be more of a Vita-like interface, maybe with a LCD screen on the front or and a um, one of those capacitive touch screens in the back. Do you want to talk about the capacitive touch screens? It's... Uh, um, they, they can't be that expensive. It's kind of like a cell phone screen. They used to be built into like every alarm clock in the 80s, but you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so on the back of it, you'll be able to like slide your fingers around and maybe control something. There's very little precision in those screens. Like it, if you've ever tried to be a hardcore gamer on a cell phone, you know, like it, part of the challenge is dealing with the unresponsive controls on that. So I'm not like I'm I'm excited about the idea of what they're putting on the back, but I don't have any ideas myself on you know how to utilize them in a really great way. So uh, yeah, anyway, capacitive touch screen on the back, which which you know might be pretty cool. And the last thing I have to share is Sony is trying to change the way that we think about accounts, right? Today they're associated with the console. Tomorrow they want them to be associated with the controller. And I'm only kind of getting a grip on this. It's a new concept for me and, and how it impacts I don't know, the way that we play games. When a new controller jumps on the system, that guy will be prompt to log in. 
and there'll be this idea of multiple simultaneous logins that really wasn't there before, right? Today, you know, kind of one guy logs in. Tomorrow, say four of you are playing a, you know, co-op game, then all four of you will get the trophy for whatever it is that, you know, you accomplished in-game. And that's a new thing. It's, uh, you know, it should be cool. It sounds like it's better in every way. And you're no longer, like, I'm playing and you're just my partner. And now it's going to be we're playing. And uh, and look at this. I, you know, in Modern Warfare 3, I had a good time. I used to often lead lo Onslaught in lobbies. Now he leads almost every time I play with him. I got more kills, fewer deaths, more captures, more defends, and the son of a bitch still leads the lobby. I love you, Onslaught. I hate you. If you like the vid, click like, subscribe in the top right, and watch one of these other vids. You might like them. I mean, you like this one, I hope.